Yeah, so before we begin the actual workshop, I'll just, I guess, uh, introduce what NUS Hackers is and what we do as NUS Hackers. Uh, um, so um, NUS Hackers is actually uh, uh, use, sorry, in NUS Hackers, we actually spread hacker culture. So we do so through a bunch of events. We have Hacker School, where we um, tailor it towards um, beginners and teach them things like web development, app development, and so on. We have Friday Hacks, which happens every Friday. Where we, where we invite speakers from like industry or academia to give interesting talks on hacking. We have Hack and Roll, which happens usually towards um, the start of semester two. So that's around, that's around like January or February. Um, and that's like a 24 hour hackathon where you get to build whatever um, comes to mind, anything that's interesting. Yeah. Uh, so look out for that as well. Um, and finally, we have um, the current series of events, which happen every Tuesday. So that's Hacker Tools. So um, for today, I think Zi Cai will be going through Hacker, will be going through Veeam itself. Uh, the next time round, we will be going through Emacs. So, so you will get a decent exposure to different sort of editors um, that you can use in your day-to-day uh, -day workflow. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so if you have any questions, feel free to just like send in the chat um, and yeah, I'll respond to them or Zi Cai will respond to them. So I'll just hand over the time to Tsai. Cool. Yeah, let me share my screen. Okay, uh, you guys can see the slides, right? Yep. Okay, yeah, so hi guys. Uh, my name is Tsai. So basically, I just prepared this uh, slide. So it's actually just a markdown file. So if you just, if you just look at the like, slides itself, it's, it's just a single markdown file. So the purpose of this is that it's such that like, you can kind of use this as a cheat sheet while you're going around because, uh, yeah, so let's say if you need a uh, theme for like a certain mod, say maybe CS 2030, then in that case, you can use this as a cheat sheet or like navigation. But yeah, uh, so let me just go through the outline of today's class. So we have first the introduction of the editors, the number of modes in Vim, then intermediate navigation. And then there's a bit on practice and then alternatives and what's next. So like, how can you get even better? So let me begin. So to give you some context, right? So what Vim is, is uh, it started with VI, right? So VI is a screen-oriented text editor, which is built for Unix systems. So you can find this in very, very ancient hardware because it's invented in 1976. So if you go to some random server, VI probably still exists in the terminal. So Vim just improved on it by adding some extensibility and stuff. So the main philosophy of Vim, right, and why you, you would use a text editor that's not just like, you know, your notepad, is because it should work at the same speed at, at which you think. So you can think a lot faster than you can code, but you should at least get to try your best to keep it up such that you can think fast enough so that you can, you can maximize your productivity. Even though, honestly, as a software engineer, you probably don't code that much. So what is NeoVim? So you'll hear NeoVim thrown around a lot as well. So NeoVim is just a fuck of Vim that strives to improve maintainability and extensibility. So it's just another group of people that saw Vim and like, you know, we can do something else with this. And there's some popular plugins like uh, asynchronous completion, asynchronous auto completion with like COC, which stands for conquer of completion. And yeah, there's asynchronous support, which is useful for COC's operation basically. So yeah, but you, if you love your IDE, <laughs> don't, don't worry too much because Video Studio Code and IntelliJ also has plugins for this. So let's say you have your Vim, you have new Vim on Video Studio Code, and you have Idea Vim on IntelliJ, which is, uh, personally, I use IntelliJ on a daily basis. So Idea Vim is actually what I use. Okay, so let's set some expectations, right? So before we start, you will probably get pretty overwhelmed with the amount of information, right? So this workshop is to just show you what's out there. Of course, you won't be able to learn all the commands in one day. <laughs> it might take maybe a week or two to slowly integrate it into your workflow. But the idea is that eventually all of these commands become muscle memory. So like when my friends ask me what like what Vim binding for a certain what like for a certain command, I actually have to look down on my keyboard to like, oh um, I actually have been pressing this button. <laughs> so that, that's the idea over time. So just take it slow, learn one or two commands each week until it becomes master memory, and then move on to the next one until you're done. So this is how you can eventually integrate Vim into your, into your workflow. So yeah, so the next one, I'll go through the number of modes in Vim. 
So there are actually seven modes in Vim, but these are the six basic ones that you need to know about. So you have your normal mode, you have your visual mode, you have your insert mode, uh, command, terminal, and exit. So yeah, basically, yeah, you can, there's quite a few things you can do. So inside of normal, oh, okay. There's some issue with the rendering. Okay, yeah, so I guess it's a bit too long. So for nav basic navigation inside normal mode, right? You can use uh, HJKL for your left, right, up, down. So in this case, the arrow keys will be as well. So let me demo this. So basically, if you if you are following along, right, you can go into the uh, I actually have a repo which is a basic React application. So if you do H, uh, if you do J, yeah, you go down. If you do K, you go up, and then if you do L, you go to the right, and if you do H, you go to the left. Basically, it's just uh, left, right, up, down. So then you can move by words as well. So of course, if you if let's say I want to get to app, right, it'll be very, very slow for me to write like, you know. Oh, okay. So I'll slow down a tad bit. Yep. Uh yeah, so uh before I continue, does anyone have any questions like uh, before this slide so far? Up to the modes and everything. Anything in the chat? Else, I guess I, yeah, cool. Okay, else I can continue then. So when I go through each of these modes, right, I'll also go through like the uh, the React app. Okay, so let me show you how to get to it, right? So uh, if you clone the repo, it, assuming that you did, like, <laughs> basically you can go inside a string parser, uh, you can go inside a string parser like uh, directory. So basically all it has is just a few things. Uh, what you can do is you can then open your Vim. So for me, I have it bound to V. Then, yeah, um, it's the link is in the chat. So, yeah, if you if you're cloning it, okay, you can just like say like, yeah. If you're cloning it, maybe you can give me an emoji or something. Then I can wait a while. If not, I can continue on. Cause I, I guess this this part is not that important to follow along. There will be a short practice later on. But for those who are a bit faster, you can try to you can catch this as well. So yeah, yeah, just get clone it onto some directory you have. Okay, so yeah, uh so after you clone the repository, right? So me let me go back. So you'll be here and you can see you have your string parser, you have your the readme and the workshop files. So what you can do, you can you can press, you can type in Vim and then string parser, then after that slash source, slash, and then you just go into app.js. And then you'll see this. It looks slightly different uh, for yours compared to mine, but it looks slightly different for your Vim. It might be slightly more plain and maybe the colors are a bit different, but otherwise it's more or less the same. So here, here is just to give you a basic illustration of like what kind of navigation you can do. Okay, so the basic one is HJKL. So if you go J, then you can go down, then you go K, then you can go up. If you go L, you can go left and H for right. So this is basic navigation, but of course you can stick to your arrow keys as well. So those work equally as well. Uh, but if you are using Vim, you shouldn't, you should try to use HJKL because it's like on the home row where your fingers are kind of supposed to rest. So that, that was the idea behind using HJKL. Okay, so let's say if you want to get to app, it's a bit slow to use HJKL. So in this case, uh, as you can see in words, right? So you can use W for next word and B for beginning of word or E for the end of the word. So what this means is like, let's say I want to go to the end of uh, this. Currently my cursor is on function. So if I press E, I go to the end. Uh, if, I go, if I press W, I go to the next word or if I press B, I can go backwards in words. So in this case, then instead of having to like go right, 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 right all the way to end, you can just like BB and WW. So that kind of speeds it up a little bit. Okay. Yeah. Then after that, you can go via line. So within a line, right, you can navigate within a line by using. So here there are three commands, right? So you have zero. Zero goes to the beginning of the line. If you use this uh, up, upward thingy, then it goes to the first non white space character. And then if you use dollar sign, it goes to the end of the line. So let me just illustrate these three commands. So let's say I'm on this current line, like line 14. I want to go to the end. So I just type in a dollar sign. Then I go to the end. 
if I type in like zero, I go to the start. And if I type in the up, upward arrow thingy, I go to the first non-white space character. So basically I skip past all the tabs here and go to the white space character. Yeah. Okay, then the next one is for screen. Honestly, I don't really use this, but I guess it's interesting to know. So if you press like, uh, in this case, there are three commands. So if you press capital H, you go to the top of the screen. If you press M, you go to the middle of the screen. And if you press L, you go to the bottom of the screen. So like if you press capital H, you go to the top, uh, capital M for middle, and then capital L for the bottom of the screen. So now let's move on to it. So the next one is the file one. So this is one that I actually do use. I, I don't really use the screen one, but I do use the file one. So it kind of does the same thing in essence. So if you press GG, it goes to the top of the file. So instead of the, of the top of your screen, it goes to the top of the file instead. And then if you go to, if you press capital G, it goes to the end. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Dude, I, there, are, there are a lot of commands, like, even like, even now every day, I just learn new stuff. Okay. so. Right now, all my, my whole application fits into one line, right? So doing GG and Z doesn't really make a lot of sense. So let me just copy it and make it uh, super long. So like, uh, let me just copy this line, paste it a hundred times. And then now HTML, basically you can see it navigates within the, just the screen. So maybe we can have, have like one totally empty site. So HTML is just this. But if I go to the top of the file, I can press GG. If I go to the bottom, I can press big G. Yeah, then to undo everything, I can just press U. So I'm back to my previous state. Okay, so line numbers, uh, yeah, as it off. So basically, you can do a colon number or number and then press G. So both work the same way as well. So let's see if I go to line, uh, maybe line number 10, you can just do colon and then press 10 and then hit enter and then you'll be brought up to like line number 10. Just and you. Uh, sorry, what's the and you for? Ooh. Oh, yeah, yeah, correct, correct. Yeah, so just colon and then the line number. So, like, let's say 19 in this case. Okay. Uh, yeah, so let's continue. So, the miscellaneous part is that this percent as well. So, the percent is useful sometimes. So, let's say, okay, so what a percent does, right, is it goes to the start and end of a certain, like, uh, what's the term here? It, yeah, so I see it's just the corresponding item in this case. So let's say you have a start brace, right? Okay, so let's say I go up to this start brace here and I want to find where my end brace is. So let's say if I have many lines here, right? Like many lines of code here and I cannot find where my end brace is, right? What you can do is you can press percent. So if you press percent, it will bring you straight down all the way to your, to your corresponding item, yeah. So you can keep pressing percent and then it just goes back and forth between those. So the good thing about percent, right, is that it works even in the middle. So let's say I'm in the middle of the function now, right? I press percent. Uh, okay, let's say if I'm in the middle of like this uh, square bracket. So I have like two square brackets here and I press percent. So that, if I press percent, basically it'll navigate me to the start and the end. Yeah, uh, another thing is, let's say I want to repeat a command n number of times. So in this case, let's say if I copy a line, so to copy, a, I'll, I'll go through copying a line later, but let's say if I copy a line and I want to paste it 100 times, right? So all you have to do is just press the number of times you desire to paste it. And then you can just like go, go with it. So it can, it basically works for everything. So like if, 10, if you do 10G, it just goes down 10 lines. If you do 10K, it goes up 10 lines. And then let's say if you want to copy and paste it 100 times, you just do 100P and then you paste 100 times. Uh, and okay, and one more thing. So the next one is basically find in line, right? So find in line is very, yeah, find in line is one of the things I use pretty often as well. So basically, if you do like, uh, if you go down to a certain line, and let's say I'm at line 30, right? And I want to get to like F, the, like the capital A of the header. So what I can do is I just press F and then I do capital A. So then it can jump me straight to A. So instead of having to like, you know, W, W, like if, like normally what I will have to do is like W, 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 w to get to A, right? You can do F capital A and then you get straight there. So yeah, that's, uh yeah. So if you need to search backwards, so let's say if you're at the end of the line, right, you can do capital F and then capital A, and you can find capital A backwards basically. 
Uh, and then there's a slight difference, right? So there's also T. So the main difference between F and T, right, is that F jumps onto the character, while T jumps before the character. So uh, let me illustrate what this means. So let's say if I want to get to the start, if I want to jump onto the like the single quotation marks itself, I draw F and single quotation marks. My cursor is right now on that quotation mark. But let's say if I'm at the start of the line again, now I want to jump before the quotation mark. So I press T and quotation mark, and then I can jump. You can see I'm just one before the quotation mark. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then the last one is search. So search is also really useful. So let's say you just, you just press slash, and then you can just do whatever regex you want to find. So you can do like word. Uh, a normal, like you can just find a normal string, or you can even do like more special regex. So let's say if you want to find like uh, uh, just any any character maybe like just S plus or something. Uh, yeah, I, for, I forgot the regex for that, but yeah. So you can also do regex in here if you are interested in doing that. So yeah, um, so so far I've covered normal mode. Uh, you probably have quite a lot of questions, but any anything uh anything in particular you want me to cover again or like clarify, please do feel free to put it in the chat. What's the difference between normal mode and insert mode? Yeah, so I'm going to cover uh, insert mode later on. Okay, so the main difference between normal mode and insert mode, right? Um, is that in normal mode, you cannot like type anything. So whatever characters you type in normal mode, you'll get ignored. So yeah. Okay, yeah, how to switch between the modes. So if you have to look at my markdown here, right? So this is how you can switch between the modes. So to enter normal mode is just, entering like when you open the game you're already in normal mode right and you can also see the mode indicator on the bottom left for me um this is also a plugin for vim so you can see like i'm currently in normal mode so i also tell you how to get from normal mode into the other mode shortly so basically in normal mode then you can start typing stuff uh, and then because right now whatever i type right let's say i try to like type uh, a const or something it, it's just it's just a bunch of random stuff because you, you can't really type words. Yeah, okay, so yeah, other than switching words, uh, are there any other questions? Yeah, I guess if not, I can move on to going into how to undo a tab. Sorry, what do you mean by undo a tab? Uh, what do you just mean undo in general um yeah so for like the tab right like when you click tab then like you have to it, it may be moved by like four spaces right and then mm -hmm. you, you yeah you want to sh like shift tap it but like you need to move back like instead of oh. pressing backspace like four times oh i think it, there's a plugin for this but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so for me, I, I actually use kind of a plugin for this, so it's just... Well, there's no like shortcut, is it? Because like... Yeah, it, like I do use spaces for tab, so like even if I press tab, it's a space, but uh, in normal Vim, I'm not sure whether there's a... Oh yeah, that's, that's shift V back forward. Oh yeah, there's shift... I mean shift V, this is uh, indentation now, so... Yeah, but you have... For this, you have to go out into normal mode. So like, let's say you are writing and then you tap uh, too many tabs here, maybe like, you are just like that. So then you can do like double, can do like double back on this current line. And then you can unindent by one. Or you can, then you can do the opposite. So you can do the, you can do here to like indent it back to the front. So you can do this like multiple times. So if you select the line and then you do like 20 of this, you can do you can push it all the way to the end or like 100 back. Okay. Uh how do you unindent again? What key are you pressing? Well, I was doing like just uh, basically just the if you look in the chat, it's just like that. So you have to so when you're in okay. insert mode, right? So assuming you're currently typing, so you're typing some stuff, but maybe this is uh, maybe this is indented a lot. Then all you, so after you finish typing, you press escape. So like you are in insert mode, then you press escape. Then you press the double, like double angle bracket back. 
And then this is how you can come in yep. there. Got it, man. Thanks. But yeah, that's not an easy way to do it when you are inserting. But for me, I believe I do have some kind of... I, I can't remember whether it's my conflict, but yeah, I'm able to do it like with just backspaces. So I guess you just have to set it up. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah small thing. Thanks. All right, so any other things? Can you share the plugins and enhancements you use for my VRC? Sure, I can, I can do that at the back. Uh, are there any other questions? Else I can go on to insert mode. Yeah, insert mode and like insert mode will be quite a bit shorter. So I guess I'll just move on first. If you have any questions, just feel free to leave it in the chat. How do you draw that cool normal one? Like, do, do you mean this, this thing at the bottom? Like, is it the thing on the bottom there? I mean at the main screen, the slides header. Oh, <laughs> okay. Okay, so this is an interesting thing, right? So uh, what you have is, okay, I, I can show you guys now also, like. Okay, so uh, basically there's this CLI extension, it's called Piglet, right? So uh, what you can do is that like, you can write some text and then you can like just basically integrate it directly into your line. So let's say you do shift V, right? And then, uh, so, yeah, so you do shift V to select the line. So this is where you want to insert your text. And then basically you do an exclamation mark, which puts you into like the bash terminal mode. Oh, figlet, figlet. <laughs> F-I-G-L-E-T. So like you can do figlet and then you can pass in a string. So whatever string you pass into it, right? You'll just like pretty print it. Then you can configure what kind of font you want for it or something. So let's say you want add header, uh, then you get add header. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay, cool. Okay, yeah. So, yeah. Okay, so I'll move on to uh, visual mode. So, okay, so visual mode is pretty simple. There are three types of visual modes. So, the first visual mode is a uh, single character visual mode. So what this is, is you just press B and then you'll enter you into visual mode. So from here, you can use your arrow keys to go to the right, go to the left, or go up, go down. Basically, it's like you're selecting text, but instead of using a mouse, you're just using like your keyboard to select the text. Then, so if you move on to the second one, there's uh, capital V. So if you do shift V, what happens is that you select the whole line already. And this allows you to do different things if you already selected a whole line. Like you can just uh, delete the line, but there are more efficient ways than using like visual mode generally, I guess. But I, I do use visual mode. So undo visual. Uh, undo visual, you just press Shift V again. So like if you press V to select and then you move to the right, you just press V again to unselect. Yeah. And the last one is uh, might be useful. So yeah, it toggles. Cool. So the last one might be useful because uh, I use this to comment out some stuff sometimes. So like, let's say I want to comment out this whole block, right? So from like line 11 all the way to line 27, I want to comment out this block. Uh, one way to use it, one way to do it in standard game, right? Like without any plugins and stuff, right? Is you just do control V. So this is visual block. So visual block means you will select everything along the same like line. So if I go down, you can see my whole line is being selected, but I'm not selecting across the row. It's just that single column I'm selecting. Then basically, like if you go down all the way to the bottom, so I've selected, uh, I mean, there's, there's a faster way to do this, right? So let's say you control V, and then you can see from my relative lines, my end here is 16 lines down. So I just do 16 J, and I can do shift, uh, I can do shift I, which, is, which puts me into insert mode. Then like I do like, uh, to, if I just comment it out, I can comment the whole block out. So once I press, once I press double uh, the, the thing and then just press, just escape out of the insert mode, right? It will automatically do it for me. So let's say uh, if I do it again, it's control V and then I go down 16 lines and then I do shift I and then I comment. And, and then once I press escape, you'll just do everything I do within the block. 
So this also helps. Like let's say if you want to delete a specific, like if you want to delete, like let's say if we are done with the comments, right? And you want to delete the comments, you can do this. So how do you use visual block at the end of the line? Suppose you want to add a colon at the end of code lines. Oh, okay, so this is one thing I am not sure about. So I don't think you can use visual block solely at the end of the line because uh, unless you can find the longest line. So one way to do it is you can find the longest line and then you can go visual block. Uh, actually, oh yeah, isn't that doesn't work. Okay, but how I do this is, let's say, uh, you can actually use command mode for this. Yeah, so let's say if you do command, right, and like 11, 27, then you can do like what you want to do specifically. So like capital A, and then you put a colon. So uh, 11 to 6, capital A. Uh, okay, uh, I forgot the comment for this, but it is, it's something like that. I'm, I think it's in one of my, uh, I think it's in one of here. So I think it's number zero. Yeah, number zero, zero 003. So you can see like, uh, yeah, I, so let's say you want to do like line number 39. Ah, okay, so I forgot the normal keyword. Okay. So basically what you need to do is like, you just do command, then after 11, 27, then you press normal. So this puts you into normal mode. Then in normal mode, you want to change, uh, press A to insert at the end, and then you press a semicolon. So you can semicolon all the lines. This is what I do if I need to semicolon a lot of lines. <laughs> but yeah, I this one I will show again because okay, so this like this last part is something I'll cover during the practice portion. But yeah, it's pretty cool. You can do a lot of stuff with like the you can do a lot of stuff in common mode actually. Okay, cool. So let me <laughs> sorry, complete editing. <laughs> nice. Okay, so let me move on to insert mode. So I've been talking about insert mode for a while, right? So there are, I think, six keys. I'm not sure whether there are more, but I, I think it should be. Uh... So I think there's, if I'm not wrong, there are only six keys to enter insert mode, but you can correct me if I'm wrong here. But these are the six keys that I use to get into insert mode. And so basically you have, uh, you can see for insert mode, right? Your keys basically, if you have like a single I, you enter in some mode before the character, whereas you have a capital I, right? It is the extreme. So it goes to the extreme. Uh, so it goes all the way to the start of the line and start your insert mode. And then if you press uh, A, it just inserts after the current character. If you press capital A, it's all the way to the end of the line. So you can see I and like capital I are like reflections of like extreme. So before and like all the way at the start of the line and then after and all the way at the end of the line. And then say you then then there's O and capital O as well. So O is basically you want to enter insert mode uh, in a new line after the current line. And then capital O is like before. I for insert, A for append. Can't think of a better mode for O. O is like hmm. not sure, yeah. So. <laughs> Actually, I'm not sure what O stands for also, but yeah. O, o for I just use O for granted. <laughs> yeah. Does this work in GVIM? I can't do the capital I. Uh, yeah, it, it should work in GVIM. GVIM is the same thing as VIM, right? So, I mean, it should kind of work, I think. Okay, but let me just demo. So, let's say right currently my cursor is on the bracket, right? So, I press I, you can see I, I'm, I can start to type before the bracket. And I press A, you can see I can start to type after the bracket. And then if I, if I go like in the middle of the line, and let's say here in the middle, I want to type at the starts. So O stands for open a line. <laughs> Very important English, but I, I guess yeah, that kind of works. <laughs> so let's say, yeah. So let's say if I was at the middle of the line, like here, I press capital I, then I can start typing here. And then if I press capital A, I can go all the way to the back. Yeah, and then if I press O, let's see how I insert a new div here or something. Uh, yeah, so Vim doesn't auto-complete React JSX very well. So yeah, but let's say if I want to create a new div, I just press I just press capital O to insert before the image, and then you can start typing here. And then 
you press a small O to go to the next line. So it's like doing that. Auto complete is control P. Oh, I'm not sure what is auto complete on normal Vim. I thought HTML completion works for React. Yeah, it, it, it should work for JSX, but um, yeah, I guess it depends on your setup. Uh, I, there's probably some plugins that conflict with it, so it's a bit iffy for me. But yeah, so typically I would use like VSC for even better like suggestions because there are templates for VSC for like React if you were doing that specifically. P is used for combination of YY. P is used in combination of YY. So, okay, uh, yeah, I'll go on to that in a little bit as well. So YY, right? Okay, so if you repeat the thing, right? Like let's say if you YY, what this means is you just copy the whole line. Yeah, alternatively, you can do shift V and Y. So there are multiple ways of doing things usually. So shift V, Y is copies the line, or you can do Y, Y to copy the line. Then if you do P, right, it pays below. If you do capital P, right? Okay, then let's say if you do, uh, let's say if you do capital P, then it pays on this current line. Whereas if you do just a, a small letter P, it pays on the next line. But I also cover this in a future slide. Y, 10, Y means you yank 10 lines. P means you paste. Yep, correct. So if you Y then uh, Y then Y, then after you P, you can paste all the ten lines basically. Yep. Yeah. yeah, I mean yeah, Shift V works as well. So then you can use Control U D. Yeah, I'm yeah. I guess that that works as well. It's just typically I guess. Okay, if you do Shift V right, that means you're already currently on the line you want to go to right. It might be faster if you just like you know 10 like just y 10 y then you can copy the next 10 lines whereas if you do like this you, uh, yeah i guess the key presses is more or less the same it's, it's just up to your personal preference uh, the benefit of like shift v is that you can see what you want and you can use also like the control u slash d thing so that's that's also good as well Okay, so that's insert mode. So anyone has any questions about visual mode or insert mode so far? Okay, I guess we are good. So let me move on to command mode. Okay, so <laughs> command mode is a funny thing. So when you first get into Vim, right, you you realize you got stuck. Like let's say if you are a new user of Vim, right, you realize you get stuck. Like how do I go back? Uh, pressing escape doesn't seem to escape me out of this. Like the only way is to like open an F4 something to like, you know, really close your whole terminal and open it again because you're stuck in Vim. <laughs> so I, I was one of those people. But basically, so command mode allows you to like save, quit, uh, vertical split, that kind of stuff. So let me go through them one by one. So you, the key W is to save and then Q is to quit. So the W is not very intuitive, but I guess Q is kind of intuitive, right? So if you do W and then you do Q, you basically just quit. So uh yeah. So another thing, W for right. Oh yeah, W for right works. Yeah. Okay. So if you combine W and Q together, then you save and quit. Right. It's pretty nice that it goes kind of that way. So then uh pretty useful for as well when I was teaching the twenty thirty year. Like a lot of my students like the VSP and the SP. Like I see students having like a four split windows. Yeah, okay. So if you try to save, right? Wait, okay, uh, that's the last one. So if you want to save a new file to a certain file path, you have to do save and then you add in the file path. So W is just meant to save. Whereas uh, if you do colon SAV, it's more like a save S. While colon W is just a save. So you would want to do like, Save hello world something like that. Uh, <laughs> auto complete it or auto corrected to set, but <laughs> yeah. So it, oh my god, you auto complete the set files. Okay, never mind. But it just just colon SAV. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, WQ is safe and quit. And then VSP and SP is to do a vertical and a horizontal split. So what what do I mean? So let me show you. So if you do colon VSP, you get a vertical split. So now you have two windows. And then if you do SP again, now you have uh, another window. So now I have 
the windows here. So, and then I can make like four windows. So when I was, yeah, so I saw some of my 2030 students, they actually have four windows when they are coding their things. So it's quite interesting. <laughs> yeah. So you can, you can kind of have all your files in one, like, you know, single uh, window to see like basically side by side. Uh. So you can, which is what you would typically do when you try to like minimize it as well. So navigating between the windows, right? Oh, actually, okay. So that's one thing I actually left out, but uh, so if you do control W, so control W you can think of it as a window operation, right? So control W and a direction, then you'll go to wherever you want. So right now I'm on the right side. So I control W and they are Monday called pain. <laughs> so yeah, I guess they're called pain. <laughs> but I, I understand that as windows, right? It's because like, I do like control W. So intuitively to me, it's like more like windows. Okay, so like, I just, I can go here. Okay, so how you close multiple windows, right? If you do like, I believe it's control W, uh, control O, then you basically close all other windows other than the current one you're on. So to illustrate, let's say I have uh, three windows here. Okay, so how to navigate between windows again is you do control W first. So after you do control W, then you can type in the direction. So in this case, I'll go to the right. So I press L to go to the right. Then I can press control W and press J to go down. So yeah, but let's say now I, I panic. I did something wrong. I want to close all the windows other than one, right? You do control W and then control O. And then you'll close all the windows other than your current one. This. So L is right. Uh, yeah, L is on the right side. H is on the left side. So that's how I kind of remember it. But J and K uh, is muscle memory. <laughs> uh, when people ask me what is up, what is down, I have to like, like do it myself before I, before I can tell them what key I hit. Left is right, right is wrong, right. <laughs> no more. Nice. Okay, yeah. Uh, so, yeah. And so you can open a terminal as well. So if you press colon T E R, you open up a terminal and then you can start typing stuff. So let's say you can like echo something. You just, yeah, basically you have your full terminal, right? And then usually you will just do like Java, your main of Java. Then you can run your Java upstairs. So, yep. And then, so basically that's terminal mode. And then if you want to create a new file, right? So what you can do is like, uh, let's say you want to create a new file. What you can do is you just, uh, well, let's say I want to create a vertical split and I navigate to this vertical split and then I want to create a new file in this vertical split. I just do colon E new and then I get a new file. So then to save that file, I need to press colon SAV, hello world of text. Yeah, um, just make sure you don't do this thing, right? First, okay, one thing I saw a lot of my students do during 2030 right, was that uh, they kind of get stuck in a, a terminal of a terminal. So let's say you can do terminal here, right? And then in this terminal, you open Vim as well. And then they do terminal again. So then you open another Vim. Then they ask me why they can't get out of the window. <laughs> <laughs> then, then usually I'll see like, you know, you have a terminal, then you have a Vim, then inside the Vim you have your terminal, then another Vim instance. So <laughs> usually when they ask me like, if you WQA, because WQ means uh, save and quit, then if you do A means exit. So save and quit all and ex uh, A means all, sorry. So save and quit all. So you should like save and quit all and then close the window, right? But because you are in a Vim or a Vim, yeah, in a Vim terminal of a Vim terminal, and then it, it goes multiple rounds. Right? So, yeah, to exit the terminal, you can just press exit, basically, and you can close it. Yeah, <laughs> but it, yeah, it's, it's, quite, it's quite funny if you do like a Vim in a Vim, it's like you know, the what is it called? That the movie Inception, <laughs> yeah, okay, yep. And then if you do colon E, you can just open like a certain file. So, in this case, colon E, then you can do cat to like auto-complete uh, what you want. So in this case, my current directory, I have readme, I have the string parser, and I have the auto -complete. Oh no, no, it's, it's just a very old movie about like, you know, um, from my understanding, it's like some kind of, uh, yeah, yeah it's, it, it's interesting. Uh, it was a pretty old movie though. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, true. Okay, 
So yeah, any questions so far on command mode? So I, I think after this, I'll be going on to the intermediate part. So it's just some useful features, I guess. Great. Uh, as a Max person, is, is there any mod that gives you an indication when you're in window navigate mode, as in control W from normal mode? Sorry? Okay. Uh, is there any uh, plugin that gives an indication whenever you press control W from normal mode? Yep, yep. Um, okay, yep. You, that, there is an indication. So the indication you can see on the bottom right corner. So when I press control W, you can okay. see on the bottom right corner. That's the... Oh, interesting. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. No worries. Cool. Uh, anyone has any other questions? Yeah, else I guess I can go on. Okay, so uh, intermediate. So it's not very intermediate as well. So these are just like useful stuff to do, right? So the first one is to search and replace all. So this is a bit daunting for, uh, like it's, it's a little bit daunting uh, to just look at it like that. But basically, okay, so you can search and replace by using, uh, so let me close this and then, yeah. Okay, so basically you can search and replace by doing colon. So colon, it puts you into command mode. And then you do percent %s, right? So percent %s means all lines search. So all lines search and replace. Then after you do the first slash. So the first slash is what you want to look up for. So let's say in this case, I want to look up for word. And then after you do the slash, it's what you want to replace it with. So instead of word, maybe I like to call it token. So let's call it token. And then I do a slash g. So slash g is just, it's just part of regex to like, you know, do the, it's just the end of the regex. What did I, what do you enable to have this highlighting? I think for me, because I use NeoVim, so it comes by default, yeah. So here's the difference between VI and Vim. VI, there's no need for percent. Ah, okay. Uh, okay, but a good thing about having the percent, right, is that you can indicate exactly what lines you want to replace. So in this case, if I do percent S, right, then I'll just replace all the tokens. But if I just do like, uh, maybe just S and like, uh, what has tokens actually? I, I'm basically just replacing the current line. Um, I remember there's an interactive mode in this global replacement. Oh, that one I'm not very sure. But yeah, I, I do remember there's an interactive mode as well. I think I have to Google for it, but I never had to use it before. Because uh, what you can do, right, is like, if you do, if you so you can combine this uh, with like, there was visual mode, right? So if you combine this with visual mode, what I do is like, let's say if I need to replace just the word in these two lines, right? I can just do shift V, uh, go down, select these two lines, then just colon S and then change into word to token. So then I only affect these two lines. So I guess I never really had to do the interactive replacement. But yeah, interesting. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, my ZMRSP is pretty long as well. So. <laughs> Can you use a uh, visual mode to yank? Yes, you can use visual mode to yank. So I can select, let's say I just want this text field, right? So I just select this whole text field using visual mode and then I press Y. And then I can paste it like, indefinitely. Let HL search is what highlights when you search. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yanking does, does look pretty nice in visual mode. But uh, my superior like complains about it because he says like you know, only the only the people who don't fully know how to use Vim uses visual mode. So, <laughs> but that, that's his view. Uh. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I know how to count lines also. So I do go with honestly, personally, uh, I do just use this as well. Because I mean, you can have a visual indication of where you're at as well. But of course, if you uh, if you want to feel very hacky, right, like. If you feel like you're some lead coder and you just like Y4J and then you paste, oh wow. <laughs> Didn't have to select that at all, man. Yeah. Is there a way to yank or delete a specific number of characters? Yes, there is. So uh, let's say you're on this current line, right? You want to delete like, let's say five characters. Again, so you can just use like, uh, I think it's just 20 X. Yeah. So X is to delete a certain character. So like 10 X. Uh, 10 x it's just delete 10 characters yank a specific number of characters then you can I think okay but yank a specific number of characters I'm not sure if I need to do that I guess I just use visual mode then 
it's it's a bit more intuitive as well. Uh, also, also you can use visual mode to like you know like select your characters right, and then you can just press D to delete. Or I think X works as well. Yeah, X works as well. So V uh delete which using D or X. I think yeah, it might be a new Vim thing because usually the words are highlighted only when I search. But to de highlight it, right? Uh, basically, I just do a lazy way. Uh. I know that if if you do NOH, I believe it like unhighlights, yeah. But if you let's say you search for a word, then yeah, you're, you're done replacing the word, right? What you can do is you can just the lazy way of doing it is just slash random stuff, then you can find it, and then you stop highlighting. <laughs> No HLS, yeah. Uh, yeah, you can just do NOH actually. So what? You can do NOH, but I, th I think it's faster if you like if you already searched right. Let's just do like random stuff and you can't find it anyway, and then that works as well. <laughs> I, I guess that's a lazy way. Yeah. Okay. So any other questions about common mode? Uh, uh. Okay. Oh, sorry. Yeah, so let's move on to the next one in intermediate mode. So another very useful one is the dot operator. So the dot operator basically repeats what I previously did. So let's see if I do like, um, hello here. So if I type out hello in insert mode, right, I can just do the dot operator and it will just continue going on as well. Um, so this is one use for it. Another use for it is let's say you have been like, um, let's say you do, I don't know, like, the uh, let, let's say you delete five characters, five text, then you want to redo it again, you just press the dot and then you can keep redoing it until just keep redoing that basically. Yeah. But then you have some yeah, so that's the dot operator, it's pretty useful. Uh then you have some undo and redo. So like what I've been using so far is whenever I delete something, I just un undo with a small u. And then you want to redo, you just do control R. Yeah, so if like, let's say I undo, then I redo, so you can just keep doing it. So control R for redo and U for undo. And then next one is delete. So DD deletes one line and then D with a certain motion, like D 10 J deletes 10 lines basically. So DD is just a single line itself. So DD will do this for you. And then D 10 J then deletes 10 lines. Uh, YY does works the exact same way. So YY copies one line, Y motion to delete and like, oh sorry, I I, I copy pasted the delete and copying, but <laughs> I need to amend the typo because I put Y motion to delete is Y motion to copy and then uh, Y 10 J to copy 10 lines. Okay, uh, P to paste. So P, small P paste below the current character while big P paste on the current line. So there's a main difference here. So let's say you want to do YY. You do a big paste and then you'll be pasting on top. But if I do a paste, I can paste below as well with a small p. Yep. Yeah. Okay, then we go on to macros. So macros you can like, so what you can define uh, and what macros are pretty useful for is let's say you have a certain text and it's like not passed nicely. Uh, say you have a list of like uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. So what you can do then, right, is uh, you can make it, you can, like, what I usually will do if I want to change this list from, like, you know, just an array of integer into a string, right, uh, one quick way to do it is you can do, like, QW, okay, you can do, you can write a macro, so it doesn't need to be QW, but, okay, so basically what Q does, right, is Q starts the macro mode, and then the second character is what character you want to bind the macro to, so just Q something to start recording, and then, you can write n number of times at the character to replay n number of times. So let, let me illustrate what I mean here. So let's say I do QW. So in this case, I'm recording to W, but you don't specifically have to record to W. So what I do is, okay, the, the thing about macros is you must come up with something that's extensible. So if I do like I, and then I put a, put a like open quote there. Uh, in this case, it auto complete my close quote, which is not very good, but let's say, if I put open code and I close code and then I go back to the next character and I press Q, right? So now it will have saved the macro. So you Q character to start and then you Q again to say, oh, I'm done recording this macro. Then you can do add W in order to replay the macro. And then let's say I want to replace all the remaining four numbers, right? So I can do four add W and then it will, okay. Uh, the last one didn't work very well, but 
<laughs> so yeah, the, you need to make sure it's kind of extensible in order to make it work properly. Expand beam history before doing this. <laughs> yeah, because sometimes uh, after you do, if you do something like a hundred times, yeah, you, if you do it a hundred times and then you realize it's a mistake, you can only undo and let's say your history is only 50, then you'll be stuck with like 50 undos and you have to do the rest by hand or record another macro to undo that large mistake. <laughs> yep. Okay, so that's macros. And then one last thing, which is uh, very useful that I do use quite a lot is uh, GD. So GD is to, I mean, GD uh, intuitively can think of it as go to declaration. So let's say the only declaration I actually wrote in this whole file is just this uh, pass string into snake case. So what you can do is like, you, you can see that uh, from the top, I've imported this pass string into snake case from util string, right? So to go to this uh, declaration, I just press GD, then I'm already at the declaration. So it put me right into the declaration. And then let's say I want to go back. So then you can just control O to go back. So this, it, it basically is a stack. So you can like, you can GD multiple times and control O multiple times to go back up the stack and down the stack. Yeah. So you can uh, have some kind of recursive lookup for function definitions if you so need, to, need it. So like maybe GD, uh, I'm not sure whether I can GD like the, yeah. I, I can't GD the basic definitions, but yeah. So that, that's GD and control O. So that's one of the useful things as well. Okay, so I guess that's the end of the video. Does anyone have any questions so far? Control O and one is a different file. Yeah, because because it's a stack. <laughs> so if you go control O, control O is like just go back on the stack, like whichever file you were from previously. That's also why it works uh, for when you go to declaration in a separate file. How does dot delimit what you just did? Oh, the exact. I don't know about the exact things, but I know like if you do hello, you can just uh, it, you can like replicate it multiple times, and then let's say if you like, uh, let's say I want to yank all the way until the, uh, maybe yank until the arrow or something, so, Y T and then the uh, right arrow. So basically, I can like, so I'm yanking right. So then I can, yeah. So, Actually, I'm not 100% sure what exactly dot does, but it kind of replace your last, uh, kind of replace your last command, basically. So, might be useful. Macro sounds so much safer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you are doing multiple replaces, uh, typically you do macros. But dot is like, let's say you just have it in two places that you want to do. Okay. So, let's say if you go into insert mode, right? Uh, let's say you have like two semicolons here, and uh, you have three semicolons here you want to replace, right? So you can do this with the you can do this with dot. So if you go to if you press shift A and then you delete and then you go on to the next line, right? So you can just replay again. And you can replay again with dot operator. So let me undo three times. So you can just go replay, replay this, uh, then you can replay this, you can replay this with the dot operator. Yeah, but uh, what exactly is meant by last? I think you probably have to Google that because I don't know the specifics also. And yeah, dot operator, I just use it whenever, like after insert mode, I need to do some small replays, basically. Yeah. <laughs> it's a little bit dangerous huh? because I guess if you like, let's say you do this, right? And then you might go hello. So you try to replay it, then I guess you, it's like you, you do the hello instead. So it's really just the last section you do in insert mode. Yeah. Okay. So I guess I'll move on to the next one. So yeah, so next one is next up is practice. So for those who want to practice a little bit, right? If you use P in visual mode to override, the yank buffer would have deleted. Yeah, correct. So that's one thing you have to watch out for. So if you yank, like let's say I yank a line, I yank this line, right? So I press Y Y here. And then I want to replace it before the paragraph. So I press DD on the paragraph. If I paste it again, I'll get DD. If I paste it again, I'll get the P back rather than like the image that I've yanked. So yeah, just, just be careful about that. Another thing is if you actually like delete the line, right? It's actually in your buffer, so you can just paste the line. So instead of having to like yank, then delete, then paste, you can just delete and paste. So I guess that's one good side effect about like deleting going into your buffer because actually delete, yeah, delete goes into your buffer. So that's why that happens. 
Yeah, so uh, for practice, right, we have this Git help repo. So let me just paste the link down. So for those who want to do a bit of uh, Vim practice, I, I will just go through like two, the first two exercises to keep time short. But then, yeah, you guys can practice the rest. Uh, yeah, so, oh yeah, another thing was, I think someone mentioned like Vim RC, right? D is cut in. And yank as copy. Yeah, I guess that's pretty helpful as well. Uh, yeah, I do have my personal config on GitHub actually. I'm not sure whether it's public though. I have to check. <laughs> Wait one second, let me just check. Oh, it's public, yeah. So I guess if you want to see my... Uh, usually when I set up a new work laptop, right, I will I will have a VimRC here and a ZHRC. So basically it just has like the standard stuff for like COC, auto completion, uh, some other stuff that I actually use, the default desktop and stuff like that. Uh, my theme settings, uh, I remap some keys as well, so to make it faster, because yeah, I mean, it's a bunch of stuff, basically. What's COC? So there's this, it's a plugin where you basically auto-complete. So it's a plugin for a new Vim that allows, it's just called Conquer of Completion. It's an auto-complete. So basically, if you see when I type right, I have this, uh, I have this like monster. Yeah, so like it, the, the pop up thing is called C, is basically a result of COC trying to auto complete what I type. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah I, I feel the same way also. I mean, some of the commands you all mentioned, honestly, I also don't know how to do. Can send the vimrc file. Yeah, you can download it here. Uh, let me just. Yeah, but uh, okay. Just one one thing to preface, right? If you copy and paste this, it wouldn't work directly, because I have an a plugin manager vim plug. So you need to install vim plug first before you can use this. Like I never mentioned, I, I never. Yeah, you can see all the steps I have to install it. So uh, let me just paste the GitHub repo. I actually use this for myself. Because whenever I need to switch a work laptop, it's very painful. So I decided I should document all of this down to make sure I do it once and <laughs> I never have to like redo it and then figure it out from scratch each time. Yeah, and oh right, also the for the like the practice, if you all want, you can you can clone this repo. So it's just this this git clone like link here or the link I posted in the GitHub. Okay. This new Vim is your daily driver for coding. Uh, I used to do it, but not really. I use IntelliJ because uh, it's like, uh, right now I'm doing Scala, so it's, IntelliJ is pretty smart in, like, in trying to get your types properly. I mean, you can do it the same with Vim, but it, I guess, yeah, even I have to sell it also. Like, <laughs> so Vim is still very useful for actual text editing, but I guess the features of IntelliJ, like refactoring, uh, because Vim is just a text editor, right? So it doesn't have like the background of refactoring. If you're refactoring, it just like, basically you can change all the text, but, or like you can change all of it. Uh, would you use if GD, if idea Vim had the same thing, but better? Would you use GD, if idea Vim had the same thing, but better? Um, I mean, it depends, right? So GD, is ambiguous when you have multiple definitions, I guess. Yeah, uh, let's say if you overload a method, then it goes to the, if you overload the method, then it goes directly to the interface, I believe. But if you want to find the implementation, then you have a bit more problems sometimes. But I guess that's very language specific. Like it depends on what, how your actual COC is set up. And I'm pretty sure there's a way to set it up nicely, but I'm just too lazy. So I, End up using IntelliJ. <laughs> yeah, but IntelliJ has GD. It's just a 
emulation, I guess. Yeah. Intelligence works better in that sense. Yeah, yeah. So idea is good. Yeah, because it's like it it kind of does compilation a little bit, so it has more context compared to your Vim, which is just a text editor for the most part. So I guess that's why I use uh IntelliJ. For some stuff we need. Yeah, you, you need to add on. So in for COC, right? I mean, right now I'm using COC, right? So for COC, you can have all your language plugins. So like you can just look up like COC Python. And then uh, yeah, so you can find a GitHub. And then to install, basically inside of Vim, you just do like COC install COC Python. You can install the language. You can install the language server, lah, basically. Yeah, but um, I guess for there's not really a need to really use like intense Vim for daily use, but th that's just up to you. Previously, I did because I had a very low power laptop, and like if I load up IntelliJ, it takes a long time. But right now, I, I have a Mac Pro for my anyone use GitHub Copilot almost feels like cheating. <laughs> yeah, a little bit, I guess. It's basically kind of stealing a copy replace also. Plus, I mean, Microsoft is used use GitHub as like the train set, if I'm not wrong. It is banned for coding challenges. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I guess uh, before we close off, let's just do like, uh, for those who clone the repo, right, let's just do a bit of practice. So what, what I really like about this uh, repo for practice, right, is that it basically explains everything from you. So yeah, so basically it like goes through operations. Uh, so I guess you can use this for practice as well, right? If you want to get better, you can use this for practice. Uh, like, you can use you you have a description of like what are the commands you'll learn and then like why you use things and like little abbreviations that kind of stuff. Yeah, so and it gives you a bit of examples and then there are a few exercises. So if you want, we can do all of this together. So yeah, so let's say I put my cause for the first exercise, right? Let's say if I want to make a copy of the accent method below, I just do yip and then i put p so p to paste after so that's why it's pasting below but if i do capital p then i can paste on top um, yeah so for the second exercise i just want to change like a word Fred frederick into zich so put my cursor into frederick so here why it's doing diw right is because uh diw is like Okay, if you do DW from here, right, what happens is that you cut off from your cursor onwards. But if you do DIW, it basically deletes the word entirely up to like the special quotation mark. So that's why DIW is actually pretty good sometimes. So if you do, uh, you can, okay, alternatively, what you can do to like delete and get straight into insert mode is you can use CIW. So then you can do, you can type it directly in. But uh, basically, you can do DIW, uh, DIW, then you can do insert, then you type it, and then you can you have replaced it. But it was a redeleted when into insert mode. What you really wanted to change was, yeah. So it also guide you along and then show you like what, what are the problems with each of the stuff. Actually, for commands like TR, you need to map it to arrow key once you get used to HJK or then map it to FTP. Yeah. Yeah, that yeah, that, that could work as well. So you can just do your own Vim bindings, whatever you're comfortable with. Yeah, everyone has their own like Vim RC, so it's really pretty complicated usually. Yeah, but so previously what I meant was like let's say if you do DIW, then you have to go into insert, then you can replace. But let's say if you you want to change, you put your cursor from German, right? Into CIW, and then you just put Austrian, then you can change it like directly from anywhere inside the world. So the main benefit again is if you do CW from here, right? It just deletes from the current character onwards all the way to the next uh, the, the next delimiter or some other token. Whereas if you do CIW, it knows that you want to delete the entire word or surrounding it and then you can get like you know. so yeah then there's the description of basically note here that the ish doesn't get deleted because you are using little words. So for extra points, you can try the same operation using like a capital W. Yep. Uh, yeah, so summary here is that 
there are n operations and m text objects you get roughly n m possible actions thing. so yeah so basically it just summarizes what you can do like there are, and like there are some other plugins that help you do different things oh also uh just one pretty uh one, one thing to point out right so if you want to properly indent everything right so let's say if i have like multiple of these and like different indentations what you can do is you can do like gg equals g then you will indent everything properly so i think this is something that you might or might not have known from 2020 so gg goes to the top of sound then equals g means uh indent all the way to the bottom of the sound basically so that's why it helps your indentation yep. uh, that's just thing I want to point out. Yeah, but uh yeah so it's, does anyone want to follow along for another one of the practices or yeah I guess I was more or less pre so let's let's just go and to another one so the dot operator right so basically the dot operator repeats the last change we've made for things like deleting a word inserting some text and returning normal mode indenting a line by two spaces it's useful when you have multiple of the similar kind of changes to make. So let's say in this case, you want to replace all of uh, Wolfgang's to Wolfie's uh, or Wolfie's to Tilo in this case. So we do the first replacement. So like Wolfgang, right? So Wolfgang, what you do is you do CIW, then you do like Tilo. And then, so move your cursor into the first Wolfgang. So yeah, so you just do this and then FW do this and then you can, Long and then you can do yeah. So the top operator basically just helps you to replace whatever you've already done previously. So we wrote some Java code, but I forgot to put semicolons at the end. <laughs> so yeah, so I, that's the same thing here. So you can just uh, a and then put in a semicolon, and then after you can do your dot again, dot as well, then you can do dot again to put your semicolons at the back. Okay, so we pasted some code into IntelliJ and there was a missing trace which messed up the indentation. So move your cursor anywhere to within the line of Howdy and then do like I space space SK. So then capital I. So I put your cursor at the front and put it into it's the mode. Then two spaces to indent right. And then at this point, Vim understands your last change to jump to the front and it's a two spaces. So move your cursor to other lines and just do like the same. And then you can repeat multiple times to basically like indent your code properly. Yeah. And use control V. Control V, yeah, that, that works as well. So I guess it's another use case for control V, right? So, so you want to control V and then shift it. And then you want to like just indent this. Yeah, so I guess the, the thing about Vim is that there are multiple ways of doing things, right? So you just do whatever is the, the, the most muscle memory to you. And as long as you can remember it, then it's good. So we wanted to send an angry tweet, but realized that the, the not enough of our content was uppercase. <laughs> In the text below, you uppercase all characters like set, huge, loose, and fake. So move your cursor to huge. And then do G U I W. So GU to uppercase and IW meaning inside word. So GU, IW to uppercase the entire word. And then move your cursor to fake and then just do the same thing. So you can just keep doing I to continue with the replacements. So often there are similar changes to you made. So then you can use the dot operator to help you do like similar changes. Okay, so I guess this is the last one that I'll cover. So if you are interested, you can do more of these practice first. And yeah, so let me just go back to my slides. So but one, one last thing. So what's next? So look up YouTube videos, I guess. So for me, how I got started was I just watched this like YouTube series. So Vim as your editor. So this was how I really got started at the, at the start. But yeah, so you can do these practices as well. So these practices will be very, very helpful in helping you learn step by step how to use them. You can maybe do like one or two a week or something like that. And then eventually you will get pretty fast.
So yeah, just continue working through the new cutouts to get even better. So yeah, that's that's all I have for today. Um, anyone has any questions so far? Yeah, please uh, do write in your feedback. I think that'll be very helpful as well for us to like improve it for the next time. How do I edit the Vim RC? Okay, so how you edit the Vim RC uh, is the Vim RC is just in your home directory. So you go to your terminal. So like, let's say you go to your terminal, you just CD, CD to go to home. I, yeah, you can use <laughs> using Emacs, Nano, or Notepad. Yeah, yeah, you can use anything. You can also use Vim to edit your Vim RC. Then after you save, you the next time open Vim is really bad. <laughs> Do I use Vim buffer? Uh, I don't really use Vim buffer. I use like the paints rather than using buffers. But I don't know people who use buffers quite a lot. I use Vim to edit create dot Vim RC <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, but I guess I, for me personally, I don't really use buffers that much because I use IntelliJ and if I do use normal Vim, right, it's mostly to write like short applications. Then I'll just use. Okay, so personally, right, I use uh how I edit like when I use Vim totally for the like backend work, right? Uh, basically, there's there's a way to search. So uh, let's see if I see it into my CD. Cluster, okay. cool. So I see it in my string cluster already. So what I do is that my Vim here, right? I just have a search function on Vim. So if I do like space p, it brings up the search for all the files I have in the directory. So usually if you are used to like a single repository, right? You just you you know the names of all the files there, right? So then it's faster to just like you know just hop between stuff rather than uh having but if you want a nice like file tree look thing, so you can also that also have this extension, it's called nerd tree. So as you can see, uh, I have it bound to space pt. So it just opens up the nerd tree and then I can open up the files, like let's say alert js and see how the alert works. Something like that. The first one, oh okay, so the first one I use fzf. So you can look it up. Uh, it's called Vim FZF. It's by the guy that made uh it's by this guy called Jun Gun. He's, he re, he made a lot of uh, Vim stuff basically. He's pretty pretty good. So FZF uh, you can bring up in multiple ways. Uh, you can set it up in multiple ways. Uh, I know my like even for my ex uh, supervisor and I, we had different ways to set up FZF. His looked a bit different from mine, but so you can use like whatever fits uh, what you can do. So let's say I want uh, another alert pane. So now I have three windows open up and then I can put between them. And then for me, I, I don't like to keep pressing like control W, so I do space. So just space and direction, and then I can go wherever I want. Just some ideas of like what kind of bindings you can have. Okay, cool. Anyone else has any questions before we wrap up? Yeah, just a last reminder to please do the feedback. That'll be really great. <laughs> yeah, otherwise, I guess we are done here. So if uh, no one has any other questions, I guess y'all can just uh, start leaving. So th thanks, guys, for being here today.